Hi everyone. Welcome to the world of HR analytics. I'm Debrun Mehta and together let's look into some common questions on this topic. The first question arises is what does HR analytics mean and is it any different from people analytics? So HR analytics is the process of collecting and analyzing human resource data in order to provide an organization's workforce performance. Process can also be referred to as talent analytics, people analytics, or even workforce analytics. This method of data analysis takes data that is routinely collected by HR and correlates it to HR and organizational objectives. Doing so provides measured evidence of how HR initiatives are contributing to the organization's goals and strategies. For example, if a software engineering firm as high employing turnover rate. The company is not operating at a full productive level. It takes time and investment to bring employees up to a full productive level. HR analytics provides data backed insight on what is working well and what is not so that organizations can make improvements and plan more effectively for the future. As in the above example, Knowing the cause of the firm's high turnover rate can provide valuable insight on how it might be reduced. By reducing the turnover, the company can increase its revenue and productivity. Now let's look into the fact that how is it different from people analytics. So let's look into the definitions for that. For HR analytics, HR analytics specifically deals with the matrix of the HR function such as time to hire, training expense per employee, and time until promotion. All these metrics are managed exclusively by HR for HR. But in the case of people analytics, though comfortably used as synonym for HR analytics, is technically applicable to people in general. It can encompass any group of individuals, even outside the organization. For example, the term people analytics may be applied to analytics about the consumers or customers of an organization and not necessarily only employees. Now let's look into this question of why HR analytics is different from any other statistical job. This question can be answered by looking into the fact that the key matrix that HR analytics measure are totally different from a usual statistical job. These factors are as follows. First is revenue per employee. This is obtained by dividing company's revenue by the total number of employees in the company. This indicates the average revenue each employee generates. It is a measure of how efficient an organization is at enabling revenue through employees. Offer acceptance rates is the next one. The number of accepted formal job offers divided by the total number of job offers given in a certain period. A higher rate indicates a good ratio. If it is lower, this data can be used to redefine the company's talent acquisition strategy. Then comes training expenses per employee. Obtained by dividing the total training expenses by the total number of employees who are receiving this training. The value of this expense can be determined from measuring the training efficiency. Poor efficiency may lead to you to require reevaluating the training expense per employee. Now let's look into the next one, which is training efficiency, obtained from the analysis of multiple data points, such as performance improvement, test scores, and upward transition in employees' roles in the organization after training. Measuring training efficiency can be crucial to evaluate the effectiveness of a training program. Then comes voluntary turnover rate. Voluntary turnover occurs when employees voluntarily choose to leave their jobs. It is circulated by dividing the total number of employees who left voluntarily by the total number of employees in the organization. This matrix can be lead to the identification of gaps in the employee experience that are leading to voluntary attrition. Then comes involuntary turnover rate. 
When an employee is terminated from the position, it is termed involuntary. The rate is calculated by dividing the number of employees who left involuntary by the total number of employees in the organization. This matrix can be tied back to the recruitment strategy and used to develop a plan to improve the quality of hires to avoid involuntary turnover. And lastly, we come to time to fill. The number of days between advertising a job opening and hiring someone to fill that position by measuring the time to fill, recruiters can alter the recruitment strategy to identify areas where the most time is being spent. Oh, well, we have more. We have time to hire number of days between approaching a candidate and the candidate's acceptance of the job offer. Just like time to fill data-driven analysis of time to hire can benefit recruiters and help them improve the candidate experience to reduce this time. Then coming to absenteeism. Absenteeism is a productivity matrix which is measured by dividing the total number of days missed by the total number of scheduled work days. Absenteeism can offer insights into overall employee health and can also serve as an indicator of employee happiness. Human capital risk. This may include employee related risk, such as absence of specific skill to fill a new job role, the lack of qualified employees to fill a leadership position, the potential of an employee to leave the job based on several factors, such as relationship with managers, compensation, and the absence of clear succession plan. HR analytics can be used to measure all these metrics. Now, let's look into the what is actually the importance of HR analytics in all. Most organizations already have data that is routinely collected. So why the need for a specific form of analytics? Can HR not simply look into the data they already have? Unfortunately, raw data on its own cannot actually provide any useful insight. It would be like looking in a large spreadsheet full of numbers and words. Without organization or direction, the data appears meaningless. Once organized, compared and analyzed, this raw data provides useful insight. They can help answer questions like what patterns can be revealed in the employee turnover? How long does it take to hire employees? What amount of investment is needed to get employed? up to a full productive speed, which of our employees are most likely to leave within this year? Are learning and development initiatives having an impact on the employee performance? These questions can be answered. Having, back, having data-backed evidence means that organization can focus on making necessary improvements and plan for future initiatives with the ability to answer important organizational questions without any press guesswork. It is not surprising that many businesses using HR analytics are attributing performance improvement to HR initiatives. Now let's come to a very relevant question. Why has HR analytics become so significant in this new normal? The COVID-19 pandemic has turned into a global health crisis of our time, impacting severely our day-to-day -day life with the industry growth rates projected to be the lowest in many years or even decades. Business continuity from a workforce management perspective will take precedence and HR teams will be required to track, measure and preempt what can go wrong in the employee space <clears throat> to minimize the impact on the business. The voice of most organization can be as follows. In the new normal, our ways of working will be more agile more liquid and more flexible. We will have a completely new lens to look at talent, roles, performance measures, government model, and work policies very differently. Now for managing the new normal and for providing a successful crisis response strategy, HR is expected to track a variety of information beyond what is being already tracked before the new normal. There are four broad areas where HR 
metrics are being demanded or evaluated to manage the crisis differently in the new normal. These are managing employee cost, employee availability, employee communication and well-being, and redeployment. Now let's look at this one by one. Managing employee cost, companies are looking at every avenue to minimize cost and since a significant position of the operation cost is the employee cost, there is a disproportionate focus getting assigned on managing employee cost. Then we have employee availability. The availability of employees will be a bigger challenge across the industry in times to come. The safety concern is playing a big time role in the minds of people because of the following. For safety concerns, employee willingly not turning up for work. Higher the willingness of employee to continue to work from home. Employee infected or quarantined. Migration of labor from cities to rural areas. This will help us track the infection trend to the prevailing trend in the relevant ge geographical area. If the area is seeing an acceleration of cases, you should an anticipate similar risk for your workforce. Then we come to employee communication and well-being. Many of us are working alone in isolation, at home causing stress and trauma to many people. Accordingly, we are seeing an increase in touch points and also the frequency of internal communication. Location-wise plan of communication sessions, fitness initiative plans, investment, measuring effectiveness, pulse surveys, these are to name a few. Then finally coming to redeployment, knowing that COVID is here to stay for a longer time, hope not, but we have to plan to ensure business continuity, availability of talent for key roles is very essential in the new normal. So now let's look into how HR analytics shapes a business. HR has access to valuable employee data. Now the question arises that how can this data be used to enable the change in organization? There is a great deal of discussion on replicating the consumer experience in the employee experience. Essentially, the data on consumer behavior and mindset can help develop strategies to maximize sales by capitalizing on those factors. Similarly, the data useful for HR function can be used to improve employee performance, the employee experience, and in turn, maximize business outcomes. HR analytics could be used to measure investments in reskilling, which will deliver the right competencies to support a new revenue model. Using data-driven insights to modify the training offering as sales results emerge. This is a definitive granular data that can not only impact the bottom line, but it can also transform employee engagement in an organization. Now, coming to a very important question. How can one decide which is the right analytics tool for them to use? Due to the fact that big data applies to such a broad spectrum of use cases, applications, and industries, it's hard to nail down a definitive list of selection criteria. Though, overall, one can follow the below steps. Identify goals. Then look towards industry-specific use cases. And then, finally, think about the end user. While you identify your goals, though it's easy to get caught up in the possibilities of big data analytic tools, defining the main goals for your program and developing a well-designed strategy is far more important than tools themselves. What do you hope to achieve with your data strategy? Start by targeting a handful of business problems or opportunities with the beginning impact, but real-time asset monitoring or a deeper understanding of what customers want and build your toolkit around those core tools. Now, to look forward into industry-specific use cases, one needs to do some research and find out at which analytics platform 
tools and capabilities offered in the industry are using and are able to solve problems or create opportunities. For example, retailers might look on how the companies are using AI recommended engines or sentiment analysis to improve the customer experience. Whereas a financial service firm may be more concerned about fraud detection. And finally, thinking about the end user to capture the most value from big data, one needs to implement a data strategy that involves everyone in the company from the C-suite to your customer facing teams. Consider how analytics apply to different roles within your organization, which users need to simply look into solutions to support decision making. Do you need HR centric roles? Do you have data science capabilities? Do you need these tools? These are a few important factors to consider. Thank you for your time. Hope you had a good session. See you again. Bye-bye.